It's great to be here. My name is Dr. Ross Kopelman. I happen to be a hair surgeon. I'll be co-hosting this channel with my father, Dr. Joel Kopelman, and I'm going to spend a lot of time with you talking about hair loss, hair treatments, hair transplants. Today, though, I want to focus on the most popular hair restoration medication used really around the world, and that's called minoxidil. This is a drug that is used by both men and women. But before I go into that, I want to talk to you a little bit about the history of minoxidil. Minoxidil was introduced in the 1970s as an oral medication that was used to treat high blood pressure. One of the things that they discovered was that patients on this medication were growing hair in different random areas of their body. This is called hypertrichosis. And so this was a pretty big discovery because the medication had an impact on hair growth. And so fast forward to the late 80s, early 90s, the FDA approved minoxidil for hair loss in men specifically in a condition called androgenetic alopecia. Now androgenetic alopecia is a hair condition that impacts both men and women, but the initial approval by the FDA was for a topical uh, minoxidil that could be applied to an area of the scalp to stimulate hair growth. Fast forward, and we are still using minoxidil to this day, and it's because it's such an effective medication to help stimulate hair growth. It's not only used for androgenetic alopecia. So some of the off-label usages for the medication also include telogen effluvian. This is where your hair may be shedding and falling out, as well as alopecia areata, where you can get a coin shape um, area of hair loss on your scalp. So how does minoxidil work? Well, you'll find this very interesting. After 30 years, we're really not quite sure. We do have a bunch of theories, um, one of which is we are creating vasodilation to the scalp, so we're increasing flow of oxygen and nutrients to the hair follicles. And the other big theory is that we are decreasing what's called the telogen phase, which is the resting phase for the hair, and increasing the antigen growth phase. So those are the big two theories in terms of why we think minoxidil plays a role in stimulating your hair. So if you're thinking about incorporating minoxidil into your hair routine, let's discuss the options. First and foremost, there are three different forms of minoxidil that you can get. You can get it in an oral form, you can get it in what's called a serum liquid form, or in a foam form. There are benefits and there are negative aspects of using one versus the other. So, when it comes to taking an oral pill every day, you just might not want to take a pill. Um, the other thing that I always caution my patients about is that if you are someone who has low blood pressure to start, uh, if I put you on oral minoxidil, I have to check your blood pressure because I want to make sure um, your blood pressure doesn't drop too much. Because remember what I said before, minoxidil originally was used for hypertension. So this could potentially, potentially, and I say potentially three times, lower your blood pressure. Now, we're not using the same concentration in terms of the pill uh, that was used in the past um, because that was used for treating high blood pressure. We use a much lower dosage to treat hair loss. But again, it's something that you just have to think about if you're going to go on the oral form of minoxidil. Now, the nice thing about being on an oral pill is you just have to take it once a day. You don't really have to worry about putting anything into your hair. And so there's a convenience component there. But I also understand if you're someone who's kind of kind of weary about taking pills every day, that is something uh, that I could totally understand. And that's why there are other options. So the next option uh, that patients sometimes lean towards is the serum liquid form. Now, what this is, it usually comes in a dropper and you drop um, some of the minoxidil right onto your scalp. Um, and you rub it in. But one of the things that I caution my patients about when they choose the serum minoxidil form is that it has to be called propylene glycol. And propylene glycol can be very irritating to the scalp. And so my favorite form of minoxidil is a foam form. And what I love about the foam is that it doesn't have propylene glycol, so it's not as irritating to the scalp. Um, and so whether you choose to use the serum form or the foam form, the recommendations by the FDA are to use it twice a day. But what I have seen from my experience is that compliance really decreases. If you have to put this on in the morning time and in the evening time, it's really a pain. And so what I, I, I'm really underneath the belief that if you use minoxidil once a day, um, you could choose to use it in the evening time or the morning time, 
and you maintain that treatment, it will work really well. Um, otherwise, if you feel like you're obligated to put this on in the morning, in the evening time, it, it might, you might be able to do it initially, but to maintain it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be very challenging. Now, the other thing I really want to emphasize is that once you start using this medication, you really should not stop. It's really a lifelong kind of endeavor to use uh, this medication, uh, and that's because it stops working once you stop using it. Now, you can stop using it. There's, there's nothing, nothing bad's going to happen, but eventually you will not continue to get the growth in your hair follicles. Um, and so that's something to, to just be cognizant of. You really have to be committed if you want to use this medication. Um, it does work. There are multiple clinical studies to show the efficacy. The next thing I, I want to emphasize with you is that you might go to um, your local pharmacy and you actually can find the serum liquid as well as foam form of minoxidil over the counter. Um, and there are different concentrations. There's 2% and there's 5%. And there's something called men's minoxidil or men's Rogaine, which is a commercial version of minoxidil. Just because it says men's on the product does not mean that you as a woman could not use the product. I actually recommend to all my female patients go for the male, the men's Rogaine, the men's minoxidil, because we want you to be on 5% minoxidil. Uh, 2% happens to not be strong enough. Now, the only time I put a patient on 2% minoxidil is if they are getting irritation from the 5%. But again, if they use the foam minoxidil, unlikely or less likely to get irritation. So 5% minoxidil really works wonders. Um, and it's a great place to start uh, to really try to restore your hairline and help stimulate some hair growth. Now, before I show you how to apply minoxidil to your scalp, I want to emphasize that if you are pregnant or you're thinking about getting pregnant, do not use minoxidil. You can stop the medication, and once you stop breastfeeding, you can restart. Um, so that's something just to keep in mind. So here I have Rogaine. Um, it's a form of minoxidil. Uh, you can get one at CVS and Walgreens. Um, I'm sure there's versions at Target. Um, and so what you want to do first is shake it. Now, this is the foam form, my favorite fo form of minoxidil. It's 5%. You shake it. And what you're going to want to do is identify the area on your scalp where you're experiencing hair loss. Make sure that your scalp is dry, your hair is dry before you apply this because you don't want it to run all over the place. The other thing to emphasize, this is not a mousse. Okay, so don't put this on your hair. This is not a, this is not a hair treatment. This is a scalp treatment, okay? So whether it's the morning time or the evening time, apply this and you leave it there the entire day. Uh, there's no reason to wash it off until you shower later uh, the next day or later in the day. So let me show you how to apply this. First and foremost, part your hair. So if you're a female, it might be right down the middle. Uh, if you're a male, it might be the corners of your hairline where you're having recession. Um, so you don't have to squirt a lot, actually. Just a little amount, like that amount, into that area. It's supposed to go on your scalp. You rub it in, and that's it. Um, make sure to wash your hands afterwards because you don't want to touch your face after rubbing the minoxidil into your scalp. And, um, and that is really the routine that you have to continue doing at least once a day uh, if you want to see uh, this really impact your hair growth. Now, the last thing I want to leave you with is that this takes time. Once you start using minoxidil, you really won't start seeing results for four to six months. So you got to be patient. It takes time. And in some cases, you want to um, also use minoxidil with other hair treatments, which we will certainly go into more detail with. So if you've used minoxidil or you're just starting your journey of using this medication to restore your hair growth, please ask your questions below. I'd love to hear what your experience is like. I'm here to help. Uh, subscribe to the channel. We're really trying to grow this community. It's going to be fantastic to have you come along on this journey, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.